Hello and welcome back. So what I want to talk to you about today is noise and in particular noise present in measurements. Now one of the most annoying things that happens when you're making a measurement is that you end up measuring noise that's not really generated by your circuit. It's generated by some external factors. And the problem is that you end up thinking that your circuit is noisy when all along the noise was coming from somewhere else. Let me give you an example. So what I got here is my second channel terminated with 50 ohm resistor and my first channel connected to a circuit. Now at the moment both the channels are showing roughly the same amount of noise, so somewhere below 10 millivolts. Now when I take my power supply and only connect the ground of the power supply to my circuit, I end up measuring more than 30 millivolts of peak to peak noise which is not generated by my circuit, but rather it's coming from the power supply. So this is common mode noise coming from the power supply and affecting any measurement that I will try to perform. So what I want to do today is look at the method to reduce this noise without actually modifying any of the equipment. So if you're curious how you can do that and much more, then keep watching. Now, in a previous video, I showed you how you can modify your power supply to reduce this noise. But that is not always the recommended thing to do. Now, to understand how this other fix will work, let's first look at the problem again. So what I got here is a basic simulation in which I'm modeling the electrical grid. I got my laboratory supply, which is supplied with both line neutral and the protected earth lines. I got my input filter, I got some sort of load on the input, then a supply and the load on the output. I inserted my common mode noise, which is generated by the switching action of the switching supply in between, and you got some extra capacitors on the output. Now, normally, all of this common mode noise should close through these output filtering capacitors back through the input capacitors into the circuit, so it shouldn't go anywhere. But when you connect your oscilloscope probe to this, so you take your oscilloscope ground and simply connect it to this circuit, then a new circuit appears. So this common mode noise doesn't just close through these filtering capacitors, it closes through the ground of the oscilloscope, which is directly connected to the protected earth and back into the circuit again. So the main problem is that the common mode noise is escaping through the ground line and then coupling into the protected earth of the oscilloscope. Now, one of the ways to improve on this, which I looked at in the previous episode, is where you increase these capacitors so that they provide a much lower impedance track, and you can also add a common mode filter on the output. But as I said, that involves modifying the circuit. So another thing that you can do is provide a different link through which the common mode noise can go to the protected earth. And now one of the things that you will observe on any oscilloscope is that the ground of all of the inputs is interconnected, but usually you'll be using it for your probes, but you also have an external trigger input, which is not very commonly used, and you also have this calibration output. So this is a calibration signal that you can use to calibrate your probes, but this also has a ground pin. So what I want to do is take the ground directly from the oscilloscope and connect it to the power supply through a shorter line and try to reduce the noise this way. And the reason why that should work is because the voltage that's dropping on the oscilloscope probe is mainly caused by its resistance and its inductance. So this is roughly one and a half meter long wire, which does have resistance and inductance. So if I can provide a line that has a smaller impedance, then current will go through that rather than through this thing. And basically, if I take a simple wire, connect it to the protected earth of the oscilloscope, and then also connect it to the ground of the power supply, Miraculously, most of the noise has disappeared. So what I did here was create a short line that has 
small impedance and it's also a very thick line so it has a very small resistance. And now most of the current rather than going through the oscilloscope probe ground goes through this line. And this in theory should not affect your measurements. Let's just see if that is true. So what my circuit is doing is simply switching a load on and off and I'm measuring the supply of voltage going into the circuit. So there's a bit of a voltage drop on it, it's perfectly normal. But we also have this very nice and very annoying high frequency noise going on. Now when I take my short ground connection and link it to my oscilloscope, well most of the high frequency noise has gone away but my signal has also been affected. So this is not what the signal should look like. The signal should look like this. So by doing this I didn't just remove the noise, I also ruined my measurement. Now the reason why the circuit is affected can be understood through this diagram. So what I got here is a more simplified schematic of the circuit in which my power supply is only the common mode noise source and the supply ground. I've modeled my supply ground impedance which are basically the lines going from the power supply to the circuit, so these have impedance. Then I got my test circuit creating my differential mode signal which I'm measuring using the oscilloscope. This is connected to my channel input and then I have my probe ground impedance which connects again to my test circuit and to the oscilloscope ground. Now my added wire is this shorting impedance and when I connect this to the ground on the power supply side basically I'm short circuiting this pair of wires and depending on how these three components have their impedance, current will flow in different directions. So we can have two main problems. Now the common mode noise will be flowing through the shorting impedance since this is much smaller than the probe impedance, but if the supply ground impedance is comparable in size to the sum of these two impedances, then you will end up supplying your circuit through the shorting impedance and through the probe ground, which you do not want, and will lead to altered measurements. Or on the other hand, if the supply ground impedance and the shorting impedance are comparable to the probe impedance, then your measurement current path will go through these two. So both ways you end up having problems. Now the way around this is to take this ground connection and rather than put it on the power supply side, put it directly on the circuit side where your oscilloscope probe is connected. And if I do this, then we can see that noise is reduced, so the noise reduction effect does appear, my signal is no longer affected, so the signal looks just the same with or without this connection, but this is not always an easy thing to do. So to get your ground connection in parallel with your oscilloscope probe will sometimes work if you have only one probe, but if you have multiple probes then this might be an issue. So we need a better way of doing this filtration method. Now the thing to keep in mind here is that common mode noise is a purely AC phenomenon. There's no DC component to it. And the problem we're having with our simple piece of wire is that this doesn't just conduct the AC component but it also conducts DC. So the way to only pass common mode noise through this and eliminate the DC current that's supplying the circuit is to interrupt this and add a capacitor. So what I did here is build another piece of wire, but I also added a capacitor in the middle. So here it's a 4.7 microfarad capacitor and an extra resistor will also help. So what I did here was put a 10 kilo ohm resistor and the reason for this is to prevent any sort of large voltage buildup in between the two devices when the probes are not connected. So you can put a 10 kilo ohm resistor or even larger, doesn't really matter, just have a resistor there. Now if I take this line and connect it to the ground of the oscilloscope and then also connect it to the ground of the power supply, I get both the filtering effect but also the signal is no longer affected. So finally by adding the capacitor to the mix I prevented any sort of DC current going through this shorting impedance, only AC currents. So the test circuit will no longer get supplied from the power supply through this. But when we talk about measuring the signal, 
so our differential signal that goes into the oscilloscope to get measured. Again, one of the advantages of doing this circuit is that the loop created between the signal line and this extra external line has such a large inductance that its final impedance will be much larger than the impedance of the probe ground. So this method can work in certain situations to reduce your noise, but just make sure that it's not affecting your measurement quality. So make sure that your measurement is unaffected by adding this extra wire loop. Or better yet, get a proper power supply that doesn't have so much noise. So all in all, hope you got some useful information out of this. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to be up to date with all my latest videos. And see you next time. Bye bye.